Hi everyone, welcome to Papa's Workshop. This is part one of a three-part series that I'm doing where I'm going into a home and adding some large drawers into the base cabinet. Now in this first part, what I'm doing is actually building the side runners that's going to support the drawers. In part two, I'm going to build the drawers itself and then in part three, I'll go ahead and install the whole thing into the kitchen cabinets. So let's get started. These are the cabinets that I'm going to be upgrading. And what I'm going to do is take two of these units, take the doors off of them, and add into it the uh, pull-out drawers. Because if you actually open up the cabinets, you can see there's really a lot of wasted space. Now you can see there's a lot of just unusable space here. And I wanna be able to clear all of this out and put the drawers into this cabinet. And also I wanna put two drawers into this cabinet and I, that will make it where there will be much much more usable space this vertical style is going to be removed so that i can have the two large drawers in place to be able to do this cabinet we need some basic dimensions so if i actually sketch out the opening of this cabinet I know that this dimension from here to here is 33 inches. And I know the height of my opening is 21 and a half. So my drawer itself is actually going to be an inch smaller. So that drawer is going to be 32 inches. Now then, they also had the face frame that was out here, and there's a recess space behind it. This recess space was one and three sixteenths of an inch deep, going back to the wall of the cabinet. This is important because we've got to bring that out flush with this edge for the drawer roller to be able to be accept that. Now the other thing that happens, this goes back deep into the cabinet. And how deep is this? This measurement is actually 21 and 7 eighths of an inch. So the board that I have to make to be able to put these drawer rollers on is going to be the 21 and 7 eighths of an inch. That's how long it's going to be. And it only needs to be about 3 inches wide. So we'll make it 3 inches. And I'm going to need 4 of those for this cabinet. I'll have one of those boards sit right through here. And I'll have another one of those boards sit right up here to be able to accept the drawer rollers. The drawer rollers or drawer slides will go right on this area here and it'll go into this area in here. Now the next thing that has to happen right now I have a style that fits right through here on the cabinet and that is going to get removed. So let's just go ahead and erase that out of the drawing now because that's going to get cut away. And what I'm going to do is put a rail right across here. And this opening and this opening now will have to be equal distances. So I know this is 21 and a half. And I know that my rail is up here is inch and a half. So this one needs to be an inch and a half. So that right there is going to be one and a half inches. So that means that this opening is 10 inches. 
and this opening will be 10 inches. With that said, my drawer will need to be an inch smaller, so the height of my drawer is actually going to be 9 inches. Now I went over to my scrap bin and I was looking for some material that I could use to cut those runners. And I found a couple of pieces that were actually 5 inches. So instead of making those runners 21 and 7 eighths by the 3 inches, I'm going to be able to use this scrap wood and make it 2 and a half inches and that's going to work fine. And that way I'll actually be able to use up some of my scrap wood and have less waste. That's the way to do it. Now then, I've already said that these had to be the 10 inches apart because that's the opening. I need some way to be able to keep these parallel to each other and I need them where those drawers will be able to slide. So what I'm going to be able to do is put in a backer piece that's going to be like this and another one on the back side. Now the distance right now is actually this thickness because there's three quarter inch plywood is an inch and a half thick. I only need this thickness to be an inch and three sixteenths. So what I'm going to do is cut a dado into this wood so that this will be able to sit down inside of it and create the thickness that I need of the inch and three sixteenths. Now to be able to create this vertical piece I can actually take for the bottom and measure flush along here and that will give me my first one. Now how far up does it need to go? Well I've already said the opening is 10 inches. The, so that's going to be 10 inches. The, the uh, rail that goes in here was an inch and a half. So that's going to be 11 and a half inches to be able to be the location for my second one. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that up 11 and a half inches. And that's where this will get cut out. And again, I can use this as my guide. So if you take that inch and a half measurement and subtract out down to the, the 3 16 that I need, I'm going to be subtracting out 5 16 worth of material. So I'm going to set up the saw for that and we'll go ahead and do a test cut. Now after several test cuts, I have the measurement now exactly at 1 and 3 16 of an inch. Not sure if you can see that in the camera, but that's exactly where it needs to be. Now to be able to use this exact mark, rather than using the line in the table saw slit itself, because over the years this has widened a little bit, I'm actually using the blade itself. If I bring that right up there to it, you can see that that's going to cut exactly on the line, so I have my stop in there. So let's go ahead and get this one cut. Now to be able to cut the second dado, I actually have two stops in, one for each side of the line. So with the stop first, I cut the first one, I slide it over, and I cut the second line. And then from there, it's just a matter of cutting out the waste in between. To show how this assembles, the front piece has to be completely flush to the edge. And then on the back, the back piece will also sit right at the very end and be flush because you have to make a left and a right piece. So the back will become the front when you switch to the other side. And that creates a nice snug fit and that's what I'm looking for. And then the drawer rollers will slide right on to this position and screw into place. And again, there's going to be a left and a right. And that's how it will be able to be done. Once this is all assembled, then it will screw into the cabinet as one complete unit. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the tight bond glue to be able to hold this in place as well as the nails. So just get that going right there. 
And yes, use the fingers, spread it around. I want to get it up on that edge too. I want to have good coverage on the glue on all the areas. There we go. Again, we'll catch that edge good. There we go. And what I want to do is make sure that this is perfectly square. And I'll put this one in on the back side, right there. It's going to be close to being square because of that cut right here. But just to verify it, we're going to use our square and make sure that it's perfectly aligned where we want it. Okay, I have the first one nailed in place. And now I'm going to go ahead and add glue again for the second one. And I want to be able to make sure that there's plenty of glue on here because it will have a tendency to soak into the wood a little bit. Using the old finger to be able to put it in place and spread it around. And I'm also, just so you know too, I'm using the 18 gauge nails that are one inch long for this process. And I want to make sure that this glue spreads around, gets up on the side, and have good coverage for this. Okay, now that I've got the glue all spread and nice and even so the cover, I'm going to go ahead and put the other piece in. Now this is a good snug fit, and that's what I'm wanting to be able to have. And the other thing is, it has to be flush on the front edge and on the back. And now that I have it in position and I've verified that it is flush, I can go ahead and nail it into place. I'm going to do the same thing on the front and then nail it in place as well. And that completes the first unit. And I can just set this aside and go ahead and assemble the remaining ones. Now the next thing that I want to be able to do is add these drawer slides to this frame. Because it's going to be a lot easier to add it now rather than trying to add these to the frame once they're installed in the cabinet. Now what I'm going to do is measure up 3 16 of an inch from the bottom and that will be a little bit more than the minimum that is required. So I want this as accurate as possible. So we're going to put one line here, one dot there. And we'll do the same thing on this one. Then I'll take my straight edge and go ahead and draw the line. Now what I've got is just a piece of the three quarter inch plywood. And I know that this first layer of the plywood is actually just slightly more than a sixteenth of an inch. So what I can do is use that as a guide and bring this right up to that line exactly where it needs to be. And with this sixteenth of an inch there, I can come back and mark exactly where that drawer roller needs to sit. And now I have this positioned exactly where it needs to be. Now to make it even easier, I can now measure the distance from this front edge to the back of the drawer roller and then I will know exactly where to position the next one. So that's actually 19 and 1 16th of an inch. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.